the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My beloved one, today is the 11th day of November, being Saturday, and we're 31 in that time of the church calendar, year one. Today, the Mother Church celebrates St. Martin of Tours. He's a bishop. Our readings will be coming from St. Paul, letter to the Roman chapter 16, verse 3 to 9, verse 16, verse 22 to 27. A response to Psalm come from Psalm 145, verse 1. A gospel message will come from Luke Gospel, chapter 16, verse 9 to 15. Today we look at the consequence of dishonesty. When you are dishonest, the price can, be, can consume you. Dishonesty can consume you completely and destroy you and make you a shameful person in the presence of Men and God. How can? That's why Jesus began to talk about this dishonesty today. And that's why Jesus said to the people, the disciples, make friends for yourself by means of unrighteous mammon. Take things of this world that unrighteous mammon, things that are passing away. Use them now to gain friends for yourself in heaven. So that when yourself, so that when they fail, they may receive you into the eternal habitation. So when this thing fell, they can receive you into eternal habita habita habitations. Yes, it's telling you how to spend this of this world to be able to acquire things of heaven. That passing things. If you are enslaved today, they will destroy you. And the base of this one is lies on this having poor understanding of the earthly things, things that are passing away. And now why Jesus was talking to them, say, Having said this very important message, he said, Who fails, he said, Who is faithful in a very little is faithful also in much. Anybody who is faithful in little things are faithful in much. Anybody who is dishonest in little things are dishonest as much. Yes, that's why you come to Nigeria and see some of these who parade themselves as politicians, you discover they are not faithful in little things and they want to handle big things. They can't manage their family. They want to manage the world. They can't manage their salary, but they want to manage the salary of the world. That's it. The people are not faithful in little things. Who are faithful in little things? Are faithful in big ones? And dishonest in little things? Are dishonest in much? Yes. And that's why it will begin to make us ashamed. You see, if then you are dishonest, if you have not been faithful in the unrighteous moment, if you have not been unfaithful with unrighteous moment, if you have not been faithful with things of this earth, hmm, who will trust through the in your hand? You can't catch fowl. Who will ask you to catch goat? You can't pass primary school. Who asks you to go to university? It's a funny thing, and that is the that's the type of quackism we have in Nigeria. People who cannot even pass this, they want to be governors. They want to be vice chancellors. People who can't feed themselves, they want to feed the world. That's their pace of dishonesty. If you cannot be faithful with a righteous mammon, if you can't be faithful with God, with money, what else can you, who will give you the true riches? We see some of these who are hunting for money left and right. No true riches will ever be their own. Never. And he goes on to tell us again, if you are not being faithful with something, with what is somebody's, uh, and, or what is somebody's else own, how can you, who will give you your own? If you are not being faithful with somebody's as good, who will give you your own? And that's where God made it clear and that is the basis of destruction of many people today. You have not been honest to yourself, master. You are trading under him, you are apprentice under him, and you have not been honest. How can you have your own shed? 
How can you have your own shop? It's not possible. For what how you try, you must fail. Who will give you your own? If you are not being, if you are being a teacher and you don't want to teach other people children, your children will pay the price. You have been a governor and you want to don't serve the common good, your family will pay the price. Go and watch it. You have been like that all over history. God has said it. If you have been driving a vehicle for somebody on hire and you are not giving, returning money to him, you will not even have your own car, vehicle. It's simple. It's already a decree of the God, the Father. That if you are not trusted with somebody as good, no, who will give you your own? See, emphasizing on dishonesty, the consequence, the price of dishonesty. And he goes on to tell them again, you cannot serve two masters at a go. It's not possible. Dishonest people pretend they're serving two masters at a go. You say, but it's not possible. You will love one and hate the other one. You will devote yourself to one, but the other one you neglect. It's just normal. You can't serve two masters at a go. People who want to be a papa knight and want to be a traditional title holder, they can't serve two. You either he's, he's devoted to traditional title and neglect the Christian faith, or that he's devoted to Christian faith and neglect the title. And then we don't need it. But when you see people answer, sir, chief, sir, forget about it. That confuser, that hypocrite, that new pagans. Mention it anywhere. And they parade themselves everywhere thinking that who are you deceiving you? You're only parading yourself of who don't know you. God is telling lies, you are talking the truth. Jesus is not having God wisdom, you have the wisdom. Cast up too much as they go. It's not, it's not possible for you to do that. He said, therefore, you cannot serve God and mammon. It's not possible to serve God and mammon. It's not possible. And the Pharisees who love money and love this scoffed at him. <laughs> said this man. And Jesus thought to them and said, you are those who justify yourself before God, men, but God knows your hearts. For what is exalted among men is abominable in the eyes of God. Yes. What, God's, what people exalt in Nigeria is abominable to the eyes of God. Do you see the implication? The price of dishonesty. And they pretend a lot. Hypocrites. And now why today, Paul was writing to the Romans. He was talking about greeting each one with kiss of love. People who have served others. People who have come to serve. Who are faithful in little things. And have get much. It will be trusted in much. And who, who use the passing thing to serve the eternal life, to have eternal life. That God, Paul is thanking God and praising. Say, brethren, greet precars, aquilas, my fellow workers in Christ Jesus. You see, he's not appreciating people who are really living their life for the glory of God and for good of others and are trusted in little things and have trusted for somebody else as good. Paul is appreciating them today. Look at it. If you are part of them, we are thanking you today. We are appreciating you. Who reach their necks for my life. To whom not only I, but also, he said, they reach their neck for my life. Do you see the love? To whom not only I, but also all the, no, not only me, but also the churches of the Gentiles give thanks to you. Greeting also to the church in their, house, in their houses. Yes. Greet my beloved Epanetus, who was the first convert in Asia for Christ. Greet Mary, who, was, who, who has worked hard among you. Greet Andorancus and Jonias, my kinsmen, and my fellow prisoners, there are men of note among the apostles. You see, they were in Christ before me. Greet Apilatus, my beloved in the Lord. Greet Urbanus, our fellow workers in Christ. And my beloved statues. Greet one another with a holy kiss. Yeah, greet one another with the Holy Christ. You see, people who understand this. All the churches of Christ greet you. I, Titus, the writer of this letter, greet you in the Lord. 
I greet you in the Lord. Gaius, who is host to me and to the whole church, greet, greet, greetings you, Elastus, the city treasurer, and our brother Pontus, greet you. Now to him who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret for long ages, but is now disclosed, and through the prophetic writings is made known to all. Do you see nations according to the command of the eternal God to bring about the obedience of faith. To bring about obedience. You see, it's appreciated people have bring about the obedience of faith. To the only wise God, be glory forevermore through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Say amen. You see, this is the wonders of being. Being trusted in with some bodies is good. See, people appreciate you. Heaven appreciates you for doing that. And now why the psalmist who understood this so well today, they say, I'll bless your name forever, my king and my God. Yes. If not you, how can I know this? How can I come into this? I'll bless you, your name forever, my king and my God, who made me the wonders of my being, who made me to know that I Dishonesty is not part of life, that I should abhor it in every form, but rather be steadfast in using things that are passing away to gain eternal life. And now why today we're celebrating St. Martin or Tours, the Bishop or Tours. Martin became a soldier and a Christian, and because of his Christian faith, one day he divided half of his clothing and gave to the poor man, to a poor man who has no clothing. Later, I saw the vision of Christ in this poor man's face. This made him now give him more information. And that's why he left for God, where he founded the monastery and remained there praying to God, interceding for others. Do you see it? Living for others. He had done small things, and greater things have been assigned to him. Do you see it? In the year 372, he was made bishop of Tua. Do you see it? For there he was made a bishop of Tua, the whole of Tua. And when he was made bishop, he spread his name and energy, spread the Christian faith in all the countryside of the, of the legion. Yes, that's what he was doing. Making people to know this truth. That this honesty is not a way of life, but honesty is a way of life, a way to achieve, a way to be victorious, a way to attain the glory of God. The way to please others is to be honest, not dishonest. So dishonest doesn't pay. Honesty is the core of our life and is the image of God in you. May God help us understand this message today, that honesty is the way that pays, but dishonest doesn't pay at all. We ask through Christ our Lord, the Lord be with you. May the blessings of Almighty God be upon all of us. I will become a trustful servant, a trusted for all somebody as good. For being honest in Little things and bigger things will be honest to the mother, the father, and the son, and the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you all.